So when choosing a new smartphone, there's a lot of things to look for. And in recent years, a big thing has become the camera. Also in recent years, a big trend has been for smartphone manufacturers to cram as many cameras on the back as they can possibly fit. Might be a bit of an exaggeration there. So today I thought it'd be fun to go and take some photos with these different focal lengths and see how many you actually need. Okay, so first of all, if you live in the UK, chances are your plans got canceled this year. So first of all, to test out the tele lens, I thought I'd go and see a budget safari. <laughs> Yeah, as it would turn out, I vastly underestimated how far away some of them would be. I should have definitely bought a polarizer with me. I also, because I suck at planning, forgot to bring a proper lens. I only have this ultra wide lens, so hopefully the B-roll shots are turning out nice. Don't know though. See what I can do with them in post. Anyway, let's go take some more photos. <laughs> So, conclusion for this, if you want to be doing wildlife photography, I would probably say neither. Certainly ultra wide isn't going to cut it, standard lens won't either, so the only hope is probably either cropping in in post or the telephoto and then you're still going to have to crop in in post. Now I know a lot of phones now have those super telephoto lenses, I certainly regret just bringing an ultra wide lens for this, and yeah, I'm definitely going to have to do some cropping in post if I want to make these photos usable. Right, so, realised two things today, number one, I kind of need an ND filter, I've been over stopping like all day. Hopefully it hasn't been too noticeable. Kind of underestimated how bright it would be today though. Second of all, if you're planning to do wildlife photography, then it might be worth looking at something that has a significant zoom on it rather than just like the standard telephoto on the iPhone side of things. Well, let's go home. So next up we have the standard lens testing and for this I simply decided to go to a scenic area nearby and see how many different types of photos I could get. Okay, so now we're gonna be talking about a single wide angle lens, which is typically seen on single lens phones. This is generally around 24 millimeters, which on full frame, looks like that. And this is a nice versatile focal length that works well for a lot of different things. And so we're gonna be talking about that. This is gonna be the standard one time zoom on the iPhone 10. And as I said, this is generally a jack of all trades, master of nothing lens. So if it is a single lens system you need, this is probably the best option. Anyway, talk's all good, but let's go take some photos, see what it's capable of. All right, so I found myself drawn to this alleyway here. That, I'm very lucky that I live in a place where like, there are these interesting things to take photos of. But I think this would look really good on like a wide angle. So let's try it out. Yeah, that looks awesome. Nice, maybe for street photography, a wide angle might be best. Okay, so another thing these mid to wide lenses are really good at is like these sweeping long shots. And I think I've just spotted a nice photo opportunity. There's a nice payoff at the end, and this will be a good chance to test that like medium compression, but still wide enough field of view that you generally get with most smartphones. Okay, so upon reflection, I am gonna move a little closer, but I do still wanna keep this street light in. So yeah, that's the beauty of a wide angle lens. You can still get a wider field of view, even with a nice amount of compression. Okay, yeah, moving that little bit closer really helped bring that photo to life. Oh, honestly, with photography, it's often that little bit of extra effort that can transform a photo from being sometimes a little mediocre to a really cool shot. All right, let's go take some more photos. Thank you. 
So there we go. I certainly think I got some nice photos there. So the main benefits of choosing a phone with a standard one time zoom lens is that you can get some pretty versatile shots. You do have the freedom to get those close ups, but you're also not that close, unlike you would with something like an ultra wide, but you're not so close up that you can't get some wide angles. In fact, as we saw, we got some really nice wide angle photos there with a good amount of compression. And so typically one lens will be a sweet spot. However, it certainly was lacking some things. Namely, it was lacking that really nice compression that you get on a telephoto. I would have liked for especially some of those bridge shots to be able to get a little bit more compression. I really think it would have brought the photo to life. And on some of those alley shots, I would have liked to try an ultra wide. So single lens wide angle. Do I think it's possible to get some nice shots? Yes. Do I think for general photography, you are seriously limited? No, I don't. However, do I think if you really enjoy photography on your phone that a single lens is enough? Honestly, I'd probably say no. I think the added features you get from choosing a phone with multiple focal lengths can really help you take your photography to the next level. Even if it's only slight, if you do this as a hobby, then it is good to have that option to expand. Whereas with the single focal length, you are a little bit limited. All right, so onto the next stage. Also, worth noting, I shot this entire segment under like this quantum leap sculpture. Pretty cool. All right, so the last common focal length that we see on smartphones nowadays is ultra wide. Now, this is probably the newest to the collection. And when it was first introduced, I'm not gonna lie, I didn't think it was gonna be that useful. Realistically, it's a pretty niche focal length. I mean, this isn't ultra wide, but that's so I can keep it relatively close and still get a nice wide angle. Okay, so this is a typical mid angle. And then there we go. Ultra wides are typically anywhere between 15 to 17 millimeters, and they do have their speciality uses. So I would honestly say this is probably the focal length for these serious hobbyists. Anyway. Let's go talk about it. So typically ultra wides really excel in landscape photography, like this field behind me. They can give you a really wide panoramic view, typically without any of that ugly fisheye distortion, unless you go to like eight millimeters. And they can help create this really cool looking wide angle, like sweeping landscapes. It looks incredible. And if you're a keen landscape photographer, then I would honestly encourage looking out for a wide angle lens. Okay. Let's take some photos. Gonna be using the iPhone 11 for this one. Let's get a really nice wide sweeping shot. Nice. So it's just started raining as usual. I also want to take this time while I'm walking to the next section to talk about those new releases from Canon and Sony. Honestly, as primarily a Canon shooter myself, I'm honestly more impressed with the Sony. Personally, when it comes to cameras like this, I'd rather have less and for it to work really well rather than for the company to like cram it with features and then for it to overheat or some of the features not to work that well. Now, I know Canon can fix some of these in firmware updates, but I gotta say, as somebody who has historically criticized Sony for cramming way too many features in and like crippling the functionality doing so. I am extremely impressed with the a7S III. This last release, honestly, it's like Canon and Sony have swapped roles. Now, does this mean I'm going to be switching to Sony? No, I love the CSR. r I genuinely think this is my perfect camera. But if I were to switch to any of the new releases, I would definitely want to go for the a7S III. Anyway, that's the camera talk over with because we are now at our next location. So seeing as it is now slightly rainy, there is definitely water on my glasses. I thought we'd take shelter under a tree. And now we're going to be talking about the next thing that's cool about ultra wide lenses. See, lenses all act differently depending on their focal length. And again, this comes back to compression. Now I've mentioned compression a couple of times in this video. However, I haven't really explained what it is. See, if I zoom in like that, we can see that the background appears larger. However, if I zoom out and then we get up close like this, the background is a lot less squashed. Now this is called compression and on wide angle lenses, you can get that really wide separation from the background. And in a lot of ways, you can get really creative with this as we're going to now with these tree branches. See, one of my absolute favorite things to do with ultra wide lenses is to shoot up into the trees because it creates this really cool perspective and just makes the trees look so tall. Now quickly, some things you do need to be aware of when shooting with ultra wide lenses is that not all of them are created equal. So something you want to make sure of is that you're getting one with relatively low distortion. Sometimes they can look a little bit warped. And personally, I would say try to avoid that. So yeah, that's ultra wide lenses. Anyway, uh, let's get back. Really got to wrap this up because I've got a full day tomorrow and I really want to get this video out. Also, <laughs> it's raining. All right. Let's head home. All right, so we're back. We've been out, we've used several different focal lengths and we've taken some nice looking photos. And so now we're gonna be talking about the benefits of each and how many you actually need. So first of all, we're gonna be talking about the standard lens. So as I said before, the standard lens is pretty much the jack of all trade lens. On most phones, they're around 24 millimeters. Typically on most phones, pretty fast around that F 1.8 mark and will usually be most of what you need. Truth is, while bonus focal lengths are nice, you can absolutely get away with having just one. So I would say this is the most people 
lens. They're really great if you're not that into photography. Say you just use it for like social snaps or like an Instagram story. Then for the most part, a single camera lens system will do you absolutely fine. If you are gonna go for a single lens system, then things I recommend looking for are good colors and dynamic range. And honestly, if you get those sorted, that will make your photos look better than like two different focal lengths and bad dynamic range. They're pretty good for people, pretty good for landscapes, certainly doesn't specialize in anything though, but for the most part, we'll get the job done. So next up, we're moving on to the tele lens. Now, I would personally say this is the second most useful lens. It's great for taking photos of people because as I was talking about before with that compression, it can actually make the face look a little bit wider, which, which always looks better. I could just do all my videos like this. No, seriously though, for the most part, it does make people look a little bit better. They're also, as we talked about before, nice for getting that little bit of extra compression. So if you wanna get that nice compressed look, then it might be worth looking for a telephoto. In terms of wildlife, I'd still say it's not great for the most part. Honestly, when I went to go test out the telephoto lens, didn't get that many usable photos. People did request more vlogs, so I decided to leave that in anyway. But yeah, I still think smartphone cameras have got a way to go before we can start replacing super zooms. So if you do wanna take wildlife photos, what I'd actually recommend doing is getting a budget DSLR, finding a used super zoom on eBay, and then just using that. Chances are you will get better results than with the smartphone. So yeah, tele lenses are great for getting that slightly more compressed look. So in general, pretty good. Finally, we have the ultra wide, which is great for that serious background separation. If you want that nice ultra separated look from the background, then a phone with an ultra wide camera might be a good solution. As I said, they're also very good for landscapes. You can just get so much in the frame with an ultra wide lens. If you've never shot a landscape with an ultra wide lens, try it. Shooting landscapes with that standard lens, never be the same. So yeah, the ultra wide is a pretty niche angle, but for a lot of people, it could be the best option. Okay, so to answer the question, how many cameras do you need? Well, honestly, it depends on what you wanna do with it. If you're just simply using your phone for casual snaps, I would honestly say you can get away with one. For the longest time, I used the iPhone 7 and I got some really nice casual photos with it. If social snaps is all you wanna do with your phone, then I would honestly say don't let a single camera lens system hold you back from an otherwise perfect phone. Next up, for people who treat phone photography as a hobby and actually want some more versatility to maybe experiment with different shots, I would say the best value for money is probably gonna be two focal lengths. Now, whether it's telephoto or ultra wide, that'll depend on the phone you buy, but I would recommend making a list of the things you wanna take photos of, and then seeing which of those two focal lengths would check the most boxes. After this, we got three plus focal lengths. So the iPhone 11 Pro, the Samsung Galaxy S20 Ultra, or even that Nokia 9 we took a look at a while back. I would say this is honestly for the serious hobbyists who don't want to get a DSLR, but do still want to have the option to get those multiple focal lengths when they're going out to take photos. I would honestly say the amount of people who need this is a very niche market. So yeah, serious hobbyists who don't want to get a DSLR. Me personally, who takes all my casual snaps on my phone, I'm totally fine with just two. Hell, as I said before, I got some really nice snaps on the iPhone 7 with just one lens. I'd say the best thing to do from here is work out what you want to take photos of and then choose based off that. All right guys, so that's it for today. As always, thank you for watching. Remember to like the video if you want to see more content like this and smash that subscribe button. I'm done for now and I will see you guys in the next one.